my presentation was basically about the collaboration between science and practice. Uh, it makes sense that the one party which has a lot of data, uh, but which is not that data savvy perhaps, or for which it's hard to really truly analyze these data and transform the data into true insights and, and input for, for better decision making. Um, while the other party has great analytical skills, but has hardly any data, while well, they actually need data. You know, the, 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 the sentence always is in science, uh, publish or perish. So you need the data and also students need access to data for the research or gather data. So why don't these two worlds find each other in a better manner and who is then the linking pin? So uh, this presentation was based also on an article that has just been published uh, where it says one plus one is three. So the idea is that if both parties work better together, there are many uh, advantages. And basically we discuss it around three uh, questions that we hear from organizations. One is in the area, of course, of research, conducting research. Another one is in the area of development of capabilities and competencies in the organization around analytics. And the other one is uh, around uh, the organization of analytics. How do you organize analytics in an organization? And basically, <laughs> we use terminology around relationships and one night stand and speed dating and those kind of things. And we think that now the situation is that there is a lot of uh, speed dating going on, a lot of one night stands, but it doesn't really come to true relationships. Uh, that is a pity and uh, we should improve that. I think it's an important topic today because first of all we miss many opportunities. Imagine that, for example, take a student. A student comes in for a, uh, for a research perhaps his final uh, dissertation or his thesis. Um, then he needs to gain all that trust, he needs to gather people around him, he needs to collect all these data and find out where to find the data. And then in the end, perhaps, if there is some time left, there is some room for analytics. And if there is still some time left, oh, oh no, we need to write those practical recommendations. How nice would it be if organizations uh, provide multi-year programs yeah, where the one student can step in and when this student steps out, another student steps in. One core reason, which I also just explained in the presentation, is that um, there is a difference between cross-sectional research and longitudinal research. And in essence, cross-sectional research is, is a one-time measurement and uh, longitudinal research is about multiple measurements. But the only thing what I also told the audience to remember is that the only way to determine causality what we're all looking for, right, is with longitudinal research. And hardly any of the students that enter the organizations conduct longitudinal research. Well, and you may be satisfied with some descriptive analytics and perhaps perhaps some correlation, and but even a regression analysis, without becoming too scientific, okay. uh, yeah, well, it doesn't tell you much about causality. So some, some more advanced thinking in that and also collaboration in this area could help both science and both practice. Relevant topics I see in data analytics, yeah, basically it's, it's a relevant topic that I don't see in analytics yet. And that is the topic, and I, and I have to, my, my expertise is on people analytics, and it's interesting there, when you go back 30 years, there were some, some models that, that were the foundation of, the, of the today's uh, human resource management field. And, Basically, it, it, those, those uh, models they said, or at least one very famous model, the Harvard model, said there are three outcomes of human resource management. And it's centered around, of course, organizational effectiveness, but also around employee well-being, individual well-being, and societal well-being. When you now look at what analytics does, what data analytics does in organizations, it only the, only the organization benefits from it, basically. Imagine what happens if individuals find out, really find out and experience what is being done with their data. Imagine the example of predictive analytics, where you really want to predict, is this, let's say, this employee able to um, be sufficiently productive within six months? And let's say that all your historical data tells you that that is, yes, it is the case for John, but no, it's not the case for Jane. So already at the beginning of the employment, you go to Jane and, sorry, this won't work for you then people really feel it. Or no, you can go to this training because, well, you will benefit from it, but you can because it's not really, you're not the right profile. What happens then? So I 
I hope that organizations move more towards a multi-dimensional view on the outcomes of uh, analytics, which includes, of course, organizational effectiveness, but especially individual well-being and societal well-being.